the Metaverse Nomads Podcast. Sound waves reaching the microphone are changed into impulses of electric current. With your hosts, Fancy Hat, Ray Veezy, and Whitticus. The signals are broadcast as radio impulses. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from in the metaverse. Welcome to episode 143 of the Metaverse Nomads. Is it 143? I thought we'd be on 143. Is it 143? Wasn't 143 last week? I what is happening? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> tech, tech support. Tech get it together. <laughs> get it together. <laughs> no, Here it was, we are. Uh, 142 last week, the Titan Extravaganza. Wow, yeah, so okay. we are all right. <laughs> here we are, here we are, man. Lots of uh, usual suspects there in the uh, comments. Mr. T, Horace, Earther, Brian, Cole, Wiki, Wiki, Wick. What do we got? Polo, Polo Kid, <laughs> Hey Nat. Oh, yeah, Emperor, what's happening, folks? OCG Thor and Zam, sir. Right on, right on. Well, we got a show jam-packed with all kinds of goodies. Lots going on. We're at a point in the uh, cycle where there's certainly never a dull moment. And uh, so, yeah, let's get things started, man. How you doing, Ray? I'm doing good, man. To all the haters and the lovers out there, we appreciate you. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all one big old community until maybe combat starts, uh, some of you might think. But uh, hey, I'm doing good. Good to be back another week. And uh, yeah, let's do it. All we are saying is give bombs a chance. <laughs> Fancy hat. How you doing, man? Yeah, feeling good. Glad to be back. And yeah. Dominic Bain back. So, yeah, it's going to be a good episode and stay tuned. A lot to talk about. Speaking of Dominic, we got a special guest with us here. As you can see, the senior community manager at Star Atlas. Dom, how you doing, man? Yo, what's good? I, I What is this, the fourth or third time? I have no idea how many times I've been on the show, but I'm so happy that I'm back. <laughs> Genuinely, I, uh, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, so happy to just talk about whatever <laughs> we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Uh, well, man, you know what? You yeah, you're catching up, awesome. but I still think Chipto's the reigning champion. I don't, yeah, I don't think I'll ever beat Chip, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I might be like second place, though. Maybe third. Yeah, yeah, you're up there. You're up there for sure. You're probably Gotta second. Yeah, that's right. All right, man. So we do got lots to cover. Man. We'll start where we normally do. We'll hand it off to uh, Ray and Fancy Hat for some news. What do we got today? Yeah, we do some general news in the beginning here. We got the bubbles, so a nice bounce back. The ha Bitcoin happening was on Friday at 8 p.m., 8.09, depending on uh, you know how nitpicky you are on that. But uh, I'm seeing 8.09, so congrats, post happening. It's it's happened, so woohoo, yay. And uh, yes, yeah, usually roughly around five to six, seven months is when the action takes place. So uh, you know, a lot of people might buy the news, sell the rumor, or sell the rumor, buy the news, and whatever you want to do there. But uh, yeah, it's it's not that the most exciting thing historically after the happening. So uh, buckle up, you're in for a uh, for a fun ride if you can uh, if you can deal with it, all the ups and downs. So uh, yeah, there's a uh, we got on Bitcoin, we have runes. You know, we have uh, we'll touch base on that a little bit. We're gonna do a general news quickie and get into Star Atlas because there's a lot happening in Star Atlas uh, in this past week. But yeah, uh, pretty much that's the case. Let us know what uh, DGen plays you're, you're having in the chats, if any, at all. Uh, any uh, any tokens that you guys are eyeing specifically here on the panel? No? Okay. <laughs> so we'll just keep it wants to know how he ha how he's to have his Bitcoins. Is he too late? Okay. <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> hey, I tell you, how you have them. You give half to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send you my wallet address. That's right. Take your time. I've uh, just, uh, I guess, looking at all these bubbles. I'm looking at at Gala. Uh, I I know Gala had some drama like a week or two ago, mm. and I was I was kind of reading into all the stuff happening, like with Mirandis and. I've been seeing a whole bunch of drama on Twitter, so I guess I'm I'm surprised to see it 
so uh, maybe, is, I, maybe I missed yeah, something. Yeah, as you're saying that, or like right before, I was just looking at Gala and 17%, and I was thinking the exact same thing. It's like, how do their tokenomics outlast the thing that put them on the map and funded everything they're doing, and they just kind of crapped all over that? Yeah. <laughs> and yet, there they are. <laughs> Close <to> mine. <laughs> yeah, the, the community is still strong there with the Gala, you know, the, the ones who were deemed crazy, the black sheep of the bunch. Uh, and there's a Discord that was created called uh, Make Gala Make Miranda's Great Again. But although the IP is still owned by Gala Games, there was buyouts up to, up towards a hundred million dollars at one point, and oh Gala, Gala said yeah. no. Uh, just recently, maybe a ten million dollar one, because yeah, valuated roughly around five to ten million. That's from the numbers are getting thrown around. But the core community, <laughs> you know, are are banding together to create. And along with the developers who were let go, uh, something yeah. of a new game, uh, maybe trying to acquire the uh, the Gala IP. But yeah, it's uh, not looking pretty at Gala. But yeah, I would say the ripple effects of all the content creators and their work for with pumping tokens and looking at Gala from last cycle's you know triple quote unquote like triple A type of studio or game Steam like platform. It, it's still it's still around here in this cycle, and it's it's dying you know over time where in uh, some of us, it, it's kind of ended a long time ago, but there's still that sentiment that people have that associate Gala as the the uh, Web3 gaming platform. Uh, and you don't really hear much mm -hmm. of anyone talking about it as as they were before. But uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see some pumps and dumps going around. They recover incredibly well from news. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even after that scandal they had between you know the founders suing each other and still they just bounce right back. You know, I, I think, and I'll keep this short about Gala, but I uh, I do have uh, as as many of us do have Gala Node, uh, other Gala assets uh, that are for Mirandas. Uh, and I think that they will <laughs> produce something with this. I think that they have to now. I think they're in a, they put themselves in a position where they basically put it on the devs that the devs weren't moving fast enough to be able to, to you know, bring it to life. So therefore, that's why they made these moves. Well, now they're going to have to put up. And I think that if they don't, it will damage them badly. So now they're in a position where they have to. So I think we'll see something from it. Now, is it going to be anything near what we thought it was going to be? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it's, there's a lot to talk about there. And at some other show, we'll probably need to unpack some of that. Yeah. The, the coping is real uh, when it comes to Gala <laughs> and its community members. Some of them have seen the light and woken up. Uh, but, yeah, the gaslighting needs to, it needs to end. There's just too much of that going on over at Gala uh, still, even after everything that's happened. So uh, no accountability, I'd say. But, yeah, April 19th was the Bitcoin happening. So congrats if you're here. Uh, the stock to flow model is just one of many metrics uh, that people follow created by plan B and uh, it's following its trajectory to uh, up to right uh, up in the right uh, direction. So on the chart. So uh, stay tuned 2025, depending on uh, when the Pico bull run is. Uh, no one knows, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a, an adventure. So we can move on from bubbles. Uh, yeah, it was block 840,000. So uh that's also the block of the happening, and then runes, rune stones went live as well. So, uh, but first, let's check out this this new Coinbase commercial uh, commercial that was launched. Thirty seconds. Over time, your money gets you less. Does Bitcoin? Well, in 2012, one Bitcoin bought you this much pizza. In 2016, this much pizza. In 2020, this much pizza. And in 2024, well, you get the gist. Roughly every four years, the future supply of Bitcoin is reduced. So historically, you get more, not less. Was that all the pizza for 2020? I thought it would have been quite a bit Dude, more. Dude, I was just <laughs> thinking that. I was <laughs> just thinking that. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold, hold your no. horses here. Are you get someone, pizza? someone fat fingered uh, the uh, input for how many pizzas were supposed to drop. I, I was literally just thinking, like, damn, what kind of pizzas are they eating? <laughs> like, <laughs> we're in a recession, man. Uh, they've, they've never heard of Little Caesars, man? Like, what right? Are you doing? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, so th there's all this, the, the traditional financial space is just gobbling up Bitcoin and talking positively about it. So depending on what channels you flip on mainstream media news, financial news, you'll just see uh, 
you know, good things happening with Bitcoin outside of maybe Jamie Dimon from uh, still talking negatively about it. Also, while uh, involved with BlackRock. Uh, so, but, you know, Rune's protocol actually launched the same time as the Havening. And it's a new fungible token protocol for Bitcoin. So created to streamline token creation and management while maintaining comp uh, compatibility with Bitcoin's infrastructure, providing an alternative to the BRC20 standard, which was uh, before this this protocol, which was launched, which was uh, ordinals uh, with inscriptions. So uh, long story short, there's all these NFTs that are now tradable on Bitcoin and it's uh, it's it's eaten up. So Cyber Kongs, for example, they didn't airdrop for their holders and Prometheus is uh, their project name. There's a number two traded runes project uh, on Bitcoin. So stay tuned. There's all these tokens and uh, dApps that are being developed and launched. So it's a uh, it's going to gain more traction over time, Bitcoin being the number one with its reputation. So we'll see how it all pans out. And then on, uh, you can check out the projects also on uh, Magic Eden because they, they integrated wallets uh, and you can just scroll here. So you got Runestones, you got Prometheans, et cetera, et cetera. And you'd have to do your due diligence, right? No financial advice here, but these are the newest-esque projects that are popping up. You might, re you might uh, recognize some like the Quantum Cats uh, an older project, you know, Node Monkeys. Uh, Bitmaps is also one that's recently come online. Uh, not in the top 20 at all, but uh, they just launched and um, you, you were able to mint the bit, 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 the Bitmap Emporium, uh, these avatars. So yeah, do your own, do your own research. A uh, lot to get in there, but we're not going to stay too long on that. Good stuff. And then moving on, we have Railgun which is a privacy protocol and Vitalik, this kind of came and went, there's so much happening, but uh, you know, Vitalik is using this, this protocol, which is the equivalent of tornado cash to uh, for privacy specifically. Right. So you wouldn't know where, what came from and where it's going, but uh, railgun denies being, being used by North Korea, which is the actual protocol with, uh, which securities, which security analysts have labeled a prime alternative, quote unquote, to tornado cash, and denied U.S. sanctioned entities are are using it. So there's all this controversy about how do you know if a Lazarus group from North Korea is using it, and then ultimately yeah. any new privacy protocol just gets shut down again, and then the developers get sued again, right? So to prevent this, <laughs> there's something called by Railgun the quote privacy uh, the private proofs of innocent system which went live over a year ago because this project is since 2021. And then uh, it, it's, it's, it's a false accusation against the team for what Railgun is saying. But Vitalik is using this weekly to preserve his privacy. And then there's, there's this whole, there's this whole uh, campaign that's going around of like privacy is normal, right? So this is what everyone's saying over and over and it should be normal. It shouldn't be something that we think twice about. It should just be a thing. <laughs> that is in existence for all of us. So yeah, it's already at $1 billion as far as the, the, uh, the, uh, it just reached the $1 billion mark for the total volume. And it, yeah, 2021 January, it was founded and it uses zero knowledge ZK cryptographic shield wallet balances, uh, crypto cr cryptography, sorry, to shield wallet balances, uh, transaction history and transaction details, allowing users to, to use decentralized dApps on Ethereum or other supported chains while remaining private so you could uh there's articles and there's some videos that are out so you can try to go down the rabbit hole there but uh, i haven't used it yet i just uh got on to catching up on it myself because i heard about it weeks ago but uh yeah i'm gonna look into it more and maybe even use it and try it out because it's just uh, worth doing that in this space yeah isn't that the ongoing claim that you know only evil doers are interested in privacy so therefore shut it down <laughs> Pretty much. So Vitalik is at the helm. Privacy is normal, normalizing privacy, which is kind of weird. But in the real IRL life, in the flesh, you know, you almost have no privacy at all now nowadays. So, uh, yeah. So that was that. Check it out, Railgun, and uh, we can move on from there. We also have an update on Solana. So this is mainnet uh, update, where which is not at a one point. One eight. So if you're technical, here's what's happening <laughs> and you can uh, d jump into it. So I'm not that technical uh, with the information here, but there was an update of one uh, version 1.17.31 and it was released. So it helped ultimately with the congestion, alleviating all the issues that we were having on the congestion side and uh, 
there's no ETA for mainnet update or for version 1.18. 1, 1 uh, the test the testnet versions are operating on it. So over time, there's going to be you know better versions that come out that make it this all uh, all that much better. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. That was just a quickie of Have an update. There have there been any guesstimates as to what type of alleviation, you know, if we were at some point where 70% of transactions were failing, like what, uh, what, what is the impact on the load? Is there any, anyone suggesting what it might look like? Uh, I wouldn't be able to talk into details there, not the professional, but it's helped a lot. So the, the, the big brains around the space are saying um, that the congestion is way less of an issue, if not at all now, and it's only going to get better from here on out. So uh, let us know in the, in the the comments if you've experienced less congestion at all. But uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Has this update up eased your pain and suffering? Yeah. <laughs> Call 1-800. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that was pretty much it. You know, there's always more to talk about, but we have a guest with us this week and uh, it is Dom, as you all know. This is his Twitter. You can check him out. Follow him at Dominic Vane on x.com. And yeah, if you if you may, uh, good to have you back again, as we said in the beginning. And if you can uh, briefly introduce yourself, yes, I will. Hey guys, my name is uh, Dominic. If you don't know me, I am the senior community manager. I doubt, I doubt it. I think everyone probably knows me here. Um, but basically, what I do is I just help with the uh, just making sure that there's a voice between you guys, the community, and the Star Atlas team. And I also help with social media marketing and asset creation. And all that kind of stuff. Um, some history of my of myself is I'm really big into competitive gaming. I used to I used to not only compete in Call of Duty, but I also worked at a company called Esports Engine, where I worked on the Call of Duty League. So I'm really into esports. But I'm gonna I think that's just kind of like a, no one gives a shit right now kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, happy to be on the show. I hope uh, that was a suffice introduction. Yeah, man, you're well known for the most part with the, a lot of community that exists in Star Atlas. But for all the new people watching, because we did have over a thousand people, so congrats to the team, to everyone who took part. Uh, right. There's a lot of new names and faces around, maybe joining the Discord, maybe first watching us today. So welcome, and yeah, we're gonna get into some Star Atlas focused news, and hopefully you'll follow us uh, every week and stay to, uh, I guess, update yourself with all the knowledgeable community members and guilds in the space. So you can um, take part in future and current games that, that are hosted. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, how do you think Surge went? Uh, talking about Surge, we, we broke 1,000. It was the main event. So uh, any any detailed information, thoughts, opinions from yourself? Did you I'm expect 1,000? Okay, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll get into completely what I was thinking leading up to it. So first and foremost, Surge was kind of our first real marketing strategy if that may not not strategy but like an actual long plan that just like went over uh, more than just a few days because usually as most people know in the star house community we'll announce something it'll come out in like a day or two you know so but in in, in this case surge we had multiple tests beforehand with our discord community we announced it with a trailer 20 days beforehand so the trailer came out april 1st uh and then we had obviously the play test on april 20th so we had 20 days to get people ready we had 20 days to talk about surge 20 days to actually get people excited and have them join um and it went really well genuinely it went really well and uh i'm it just makes me look forward to the future because it just reiterates to me how many people are just really excited about Star Atlas and how many people know about Star Atlas. And if you communicate it effectively and if you market something effectively, a lot of people want to get in. So uh, that was really reassuring to me. Um, the playtest itself, I actually went into it thinking I, I made an estimate probably three days beforehand saying i think there's probably going to be anywhere from like 400 to 600 that was my guess um not because i don't think we can get a bunch of people but because star atlas is still closed access um but we i mean i i'm sure you guys know but we have a, a key request channel in our discord and we were giving them away like hotcakes on twitter we probably gave away like i'm um, a couple thousand a few thousand keys 
And I was like, wow, uh, there's a lot of people who are interested in this. And then I kind of threw that estimate out the window. Uh, and then we got the 1060. So um, going into it, I did not think we were uh, going to hit that 1000 mark. A couple days before, I changed my tune because I saw I saw all the people who were interested. Um, and I, even still now, though, I'm still like on the moon because that 1000 players is so insane. It's so crazy. It's so cool. I know there's some uh, there were some lag issues of, of course, but there's a lot a lot to learn from something like this. And um, unfortunately, you know, it is a Saturday, it is the weekend, so I I I was not able to talk to the team and get like some feedback from hey, what do we learn from this test? But that I have like a whole list of questions and stats and all these different things that I, right. I want and need on on Monday that I'll that I'll get. Sorry, that was a super long winded answer, but. No, I mean, I think that's all info we all wanted to know. One of the questions I had, which you probably don't know, but it'd be good to get this on Monday, uh, would be how many of uh, how many unique logins were there during the entire uh, uh, window of surge? Yeah, you know, I, we're, I, we're obviously yeah. looking for concurrent users, but I'm also being that you mentioned you guys also were giving out, you know, keys like candy. I'm curious, like how many actually showed up across the board? Yeah, yeah. So just for transparency, I, a couple questions that I have are how many keys were redeemed since mm -hmm. April 1st? And then how many, uh, yeah, like you said, how many unique logins, how many unique people were in Surge? Those are the two yeah. that I'm, I'm really, really interested in. Um, and then, of course, you know, I what were the metrics for like social media and all these other questions and Kind of what did we learn from this test? You know, how, how what happened with the tags, for example, when we got past a certain amount of, of people um, in surge, tags just weren't working at that point. So what did we learn from that? Um, you know, other, you know, I have a bunch of questions that I'm going to be asking on Monday. I'm going to do my best to get a write up as soon as possible to everyone in the community because I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people are interested. What did we learn? Because it was it was massive. One thousand sixty people. I think I, it was actually one thousand seventy one. Um, but yeah, super excited, man. Was such a good day for me. Absolutely, man. It was an amazing milestone. So, you know, again, round of applause for the team. And, you know, Rome showed up. We had the most members of Rome, uh, over 30, actually, at, uh, at the peak. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was amazing. We had a fun time. It, at first, we were hyper strategizing uh, uh, to some level. But then once the, the you weren't able to claim the tags, it was more of like, okay, yeah, it's just it, it's fun to just be around that many people in one instance, uh, and we you know you're, we're competitive <laughs> in nature, but uh, yeah, it, it was kind of there was a lot of conversation around how much Ooster's lead was in 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 claiming uh, the the tags versus any other uh, the other two factions, and then we were like, oh, aim botting, like it was it was a funny conversation, but. Uh, that's also a metric that uh, I would like to know on the back end, not just how many new wallets first time ever jumped in out of the thousand, um, but also if there was anything on your end on the back end that was keeping track of maybe botting, you know, I, for, for whatever it's worth, it's like you weren't going to eliminate <laughs> botting for this instance of a, of a test. So it's not even, we're not, I'm not even trying to argue for or against it. I'm just curious to to know if the team and if they can talk on anything that they're they're using currently for tracking this stuff. My my question is is how many artifacts does everyone think they shot thinking they were getting a clean kill? Oh <laughs> my god, dude. those glitched bodies! <laughs> the amount of people that I killed would see their body like fall over, and then <laughs> then they I'd just see them flying around a second later. I'm like, all right, <laughs> you guys are lucky. You guys are lucky. Yeah, but, but yeah, I wouldn't say don't don't underestimate the power of the word re rewards, you know, for all of the marketing and advertising leading up to this. I'd say it, it played a big role in uh, oh, getting this many people in here. So uh, good, good, uh, good move on that on that end. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I think there's there's a lot to. Yeah, seriously, a lot to learn, a lot to reflect on, um, not even just from in game, like multiplayer server technology, you know, gameplay engineers systems engineers but also from from my standpoint social media what worked for what worked what what tweets did the best what you know what wording worked the best um rewards you know like obviously the rewards worked really well you know so there's just a lot to learn for like i said not just those in-game teams but also 
people like myself where you can really learn from something and kind of move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Less is more in many cases, but uh, it's never enough for Web3 gamers, you know, when it comes to testing something out or spending a lot of time on one game or another, you know, they, they want it to be worth their wild. <laughs> so yeah, uh, to each sure. their own. But it was great to see that there was some type of reward incentive for uh, taking part in in the test. Dude, and there, I, I'm not kidding. The rare rewards are insane. I I um I actually made a comparison to if you guys have ever seen other games with like these like super rare skins that were from the beginning days of the game. Like for example, League of Legends has like Bowser Ramis. And it's not called Bowser Ramus, but it's just green. It's like this armadillo that's green and black. And so, like, people call it Bowser Ramus. But it's, like, a super rare skin. And people will pay, like, thousands of dollars for it if they have an account with it. And, I'm not, I'm, you know, obviously I'm not saying anything on any value or anything. But what I'm saying is, like, these skins or these crew are so, so good. The rare ones are so good. The, like, the hints of gold on them, you know, the the significance of them during like a private test or during closed access during a surge test for the multiplayer technology back in the early days of star Alice, I could see these being like, just like some of the, like the, the most sought after skins or crew. And just in my, in my, this is my opinion. I'm not talking for the team or anything like that. This is just my opinion looking at them. Cause I'm a really big fan of the crew. I think Hano and the character team did a really good job with the, uh, the crew members. Yes. That, right yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I personally, when they were cycling through and it, it, I would really only be able to tell the difference because of the length of each uh, clip as it switches for each character. Um, not much difference. So like the mud stood out the most because I had a face mask, but it was for the Ooster, it wasn't that of a that dramatic of a change. Uh, you know, yeah. you can tell there's less dark uh, for clothing on the Ooster here. The Oni, if I didn't look at the chest, I wouldn't, uh, and, and the lighting on the... Uh, on the visors, I don't know. That's, that's me personally. There's no real huge distinction. Um, but if the effects of the character in game are that are that substantial, then I don't really mind myself. I'm not the biggest on skins. I know that's a huge market, mm -hmm. but I, I feel like the more skins that get introduced in this such an early stage, it kind of just means less and less to me. Uh, I would I would want it to be a very finite amount. Um, but yeah, once the skin market opens up, people are going to be making skins left and right. And then yeah. those earlier skins are going to be sought after most definitely. Cause you can't replicate those. <clears throat> yeah. The common and uncommon ones, I would say, yeah, there's, there's not much that changes, yeah. but I think that's intended. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is intended. If, if you guys have ever heard Hano talk, he's, he's yeah. super adamant on making everything not like everything in the early stages of Star Alice basic. So we can always level up. We can always do things that are better and one up ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only that, but also when there's like a tier system, the things that are at the bottom, the common ones need to look basic. They hundred yeah. percent need to look basic. So I would say like the common and uncommon look pretty basic. I still think they're, they're, they're cool, but For then sure. you get to the rare ones and then you see this gold, this fully gold, golded mm -hmm. out Ooster. You see this this Oni, this Marie's right here with war paint added. Now he has a, a gold accent, gold um, gold goggles. He has a gold thing on his chin. I don't know what, what exactly to call that. And then you see this right. guy with a pattern, like it's like a pattern embroidered onto his uh, his outfit, and he has this really cool yeah. design. So the the, uh, the the gold carbon fiber look on the Ooster is pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty sexy. badass. It's pretty yeah. badass. Speaking of Oosters, you know, Heimdall came out in mass, you know, got some great group photos on Twitter, but okay. yeah, they, they were, they were pretty organized next to uh, what I would say as I was uh, looking across the space, you know, uh, even Aphia came out, they had a nice group photo. So it, it's good to get these types of types of uh, guilds out there and taking photos together, you know, not employ everyone doing it, gets more attention out there, <clears throat> get uh, increases the competition and gets more people interested. So. So shout out to Heimdall. I'd say the best Ooster Guild, uh, personally, single faction. Uh, as we are Rome, single faction, but we are we are Oni. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so it was a good time all around. And there's some Oni in that picture. You should be shamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Pain in my ass, but shout out to Heimdall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on that note, talking about how characters look. So let's jump to 
Falcor's photos that he took, because he actually, at base for Oni, took photos. These only two photos, and I, I maybe there was a backside photo. But what the hell is this? What, oh is this like God. the most Yo, common? Yo, it's like a happened? gremlin what living under happened? a bridge. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> is this a joke? This when I know April Fool's past, that we're still in April. But what the hell is this? Is this like the it's base like tier a, model? Looks like a Ferengi. God. It looks like a yeah. It looks like it's a Fugazi yeah. Ferengi. It looks like a Marie's been into it like a zombie or something. Yeah, man. I like the outfit. Uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, how many tails does this guy have on the back of his head? I think it's just one. One short, solid one. I'd say. <laughs> one, one nub. A nub. <laughs> <laughs> you know, much shorter in stature. You know, not wearing the same getup. Uh you know, rough around the edges. As far he has like a Chad chin going on. You know, uh, <laughs> jawline. Goal but of game is that. <laughs> do you do you know about this? And, and do you have any information or insight on like what if wh- I was just like, yeah, it's an it's a, it's an Easter egg. That's the it's final Easter- boss of of Star Atlas. Final boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm selling all my shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! Somebody forgot to put on their glasses. <laughs> But there's another photo. I think you could cycle uh, to a. There's one closer. It was a closer uh, headshot of it. But yeah, that was pretty cool to see that there was something, maybe a mistake or an actual Easter egg that 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 happened. Nah, not an Easter egg. I promise you. Hano <laughs> Hano is super serious on the quality of every character. I'm sure. I'm sure if he saw that, he would. Maybe a blood vessel would would pop. <laughs> How does there. that even happen? Yeah. Well, shout awesome. out to Hano. Shout out to Hano. I love Hano. Good Such stuff, a Hano. good good part of the team. All right, and uh, yeah, if, if if there's any questions for Dom uh, about Surge or anything Star Atlas related, just let us know in the comment section. We're watching, and um, yeah, so other uh, future future versions of Sage. What do you? I, I know the team and uh, everybody talked about from the team that the priority Chipto specifically saying it's going to be the racing, which has their most uh, their most attention moving forward. So, do we see the uh, Sage and the versions getting updated and and uh, maybe a new map, or is it? What's the future of Sage? Uh, I mean, of Surge mode um, within Real Engine Five. Oh, Surge. Okay, Surge. Yeah. The future of Surge. I can see two possible scenarios. Um, number one is Surge is just left open in perpetuity, and it's a game mode in Star Atlas that people can play. It's a map people can join, and then people can play Surge. Number two would be something that I've heard Michael talk about, which is weekend. Like every weekend, there is a Surge kind of. Uh, it goes live for, I don't know, Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, whatever. Uh, and then a- every week it's live at that time, and people can look forward to this weekly kind of weekend thing, and people can play it. Um, I th- Those are the two that I'm hearing thrown around right now. I'm not saying we go with either of those, or we, we do go with a single one or whatever, but th- those are the things that I'm hearing right now. Okay, so I, I guess – push the envelope here are these saturday if if this is to be the, the reality with the surge mode are there going to be weekly or a monthly reward or is it going to be a um like I, i'm thinking creatively here maybe for the whole month right for every week for every weekend or saturday that there's a competition everything gets tallied so now there needs to be more engagement up until the end of the month where then rewards are distributed based off of the amount of wins it, like and it this could go left right up and down and many ideas and things that could be thrown out but are there going to be incentives for the game mode being open and for any star atlas hosted events like on a weekly basis like you mentioned if that's the case if it happens that way there would need to be a, a serious discussion because it depends like if it's left open in perpetuity <laughs> if it's left open in perpetuity like it's there is no weekend events or anything like that then it would need to be a conversation with Chris. Like, mm-hmm. what makes sense? You don't want to give away, like, for example, he's uh, if if anything gives out Atlas, for example, like Surge did, right. needs to go through the eyes of Chris because he needs to he needs to know exactly how much Atlas is being emitted into into the economy sure, sure. and being used and all that kind of stuff. So, I I'm not comfortable saying if there would be rewards. I would bet on if if there's no like meta gravity test then I would doubt that there are rewards, but mm-hmm. I could see there being some kind of Atlas kind of reward if it's like a weekend event. But like I said, uh, yeah. this is not something that I've talked with Chris about and he would need to make that decision for sure. Yeah, yeah. It could be like a theory craft situation because you know you have LP, you have XP, there's you know going to be survey data units. There's a 
crap ton more that are in circulation or total mm -hmm. quantity of them. So maybe in, in some capacity, uh, updating the character, right? Because we will have crew. So maybe not mm -hmm. just straight up Atlas rewards, but um, maybe some XP that you can help uh, help along your character with that would yeah. have an effect in, in based. So yeah, um, uh, many avenues to take. <laughs> so the crew, for example, the crew, um, the nine crew that we've seen from three from each tier, there's only one from each tier that's going to be given out to everyone. Um, so there's still six uh, different crew. Um, so I could see maybe those being used in another uh, metagravity test or maybe one of these weekend ones. Who knows? I, I would probably bet towards the metagravity test only, but um, I could see that for sure. Um, but yeah. Sweet. Um, for the record, are you guys going to remove any ships or change anything related to the current sur uh, surge mode map? I wouldn't Would you... say no. I, I think there's. it's probably likely that things move around. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, there you go, Emperor. There, there might be some switching of ships. But uh, I'd say not as soon as you think. But that's just me. But uh, yeah, on that note, <clears throat> any, any other questions Great related to Surge? Yeah, right? For planning and strategizing. Yeah, so uh, I see a hologram tweet here saying that Ooster faction ultimately claimed victory. Uh, is that something you can confirm? That's actually something that... So I did message Danny to get this data, and yeah. we're actually looking into the data right now to see who exactly won the most. Um, I My bet would probably be Ooster because just from the eye test when I was playing, they yeah. won the most. I don't even remember seeing. Did we? Did we even win one in the first test? No, which was pretty embarrassing. Not even. Oh, not even embarrassing win. because it's like we realized real fast that there was something going on. And again, there's no proof on my end, but the score yeah. it was ticking up every second on the Ooster side to the point where there was like a seventy point gap or more almost for every round. It was kind of r ridiculous. Uh, but hey, uh, I'm not complaining. That rare Ooster looks pretty dope. And <laughs> I don't think anyone dope. would uh, say no for a rare Ooster if uh, Ooster yeah. won. But I'd be curious to also know the actual player count in each faction. Like, what was that's the uh, what yeah, were you up against? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Also, for you, Dom, if there were it, it, the way that it was tallied for who's going to be the winner, I mean, what faction is going to be the winner? Is it the total uh, across both um, time zones? I mean, t both game times that were people were able to play. So a tally of the total, and then like how how exactly is it going to be uh, the winner chosen? Yeah, th these are literally the same questions that I had for Danny. So like the first test, the first time slot, I think there's. A lot of data you just have to kind of throw out because, for example, there was wins being had where a faction only had like 10 tags. And then should that win count towards this yeah. skin? Like, especially when tags aren't even obtainable, I would argue no. There's no right because you have to keep like, especially when there's a reward, you have to be you have to keep that competitive integrity. Um, so I, I there's a lot of data that hmm. they have to look at to determine which win should count, which win shouldn't count. I would say all the wins in the second test would would definitely count because there was there was no shenanigans, um, right? And I'm not just saying that because only the only dominated, and, yeah, yeah the only okay. dominated. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know the only you know actually only the only only the only wins are going to count. All right, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, there's. I'm not comfortable saying exactly, you know how we're going to determine things because there's a lot of funky business and we're probably going to need to, um, we're probably going to need to adapt a little bit here. Um, to be honest, well, one thing that I know that we already adapted to is one of the requirements that was going to be needed to actually get one of these skins was you get a single kill. You get one kill, right. you get one kill in surge and you play for 30 minutes and you get you get the rewards. However, if you played in that first test, I I, I couldn't even get a kill. I I would kill someone right. and they would just they would come back to life. And I I'm pretty sure that's not registering. Um, so that's that's a requirement that I talked with the team about and we got removed. So that's no longer a requirement, which is great, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyways, I'll have more data. Um, uh, 
early next week. Like I said, I have I have a whole list of questions. I'm even adding questions right now that you guys are talking about, like uh, faction numbers. That's not something that I thought of. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in that. See what which faction kind of showed up. So if anyone else has any any things they're interested in in the test, please please let me know. I'll, I'll work at getting kind of that information, that data. Nice. Yeah, uh, I do have a tweet here from Club Andre and. He played Surge on all three factions, and he had to mm. say it's incredibly easy for <clears throat> users. They have a backdoor quick access to kill lots of only AFKs. Yeah. He's using this little door here. Has <laughs> uh, another picture. Sneaky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's I can get some insight here, too. So we actually were, we were when we were testing Surge, um, the plan was to have the bases cycle. So every every round, mm, you're, yeah. you're you would spawn at a different base, but a couple of days before it it completely bugged out, and Damn. I was Marie spawning with the muds, and you know we just got, we reached the deadline and we weren't able to do that change, which which is unfortunate. <laughs> so it, it could be a change that that comes to further surge testing, which is which would be awesome, uh, because I agree. I think there are some some bases that are a little bit or a lot a bit more. Uh, have, have a have a, a bigger tactical advantage. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, during that uh, tag glitch, this might have been the only way to get somebody who wasn't moving about and like <laughs> transporting <laughs> and just vanishing. My favorite thing would be when people would get a nade and throw a nade into this <laughs> huge crowd of <laughs> and no tags <laughs> and just zero tags. Good job. <laughs> I, I threw three grenades. I was collecting. <laughs> trying to survive i got over to mud i did that exact same thing and i'm like great i just boosted out of there <laughs> fun times but yeah right around for the first uh play test it was around six to seven hundred once we came down from that a thousand after a good hour and a half to it was more enjoyable uh but still no tags and then the second uh play test of course was just a smoother ride it helps so, you also determine your your limitations too like what number can we get up to where it's still playable, where it's still enjoyable. And I would say, yeah, I would argue right around where you're kind of saying that 500 to 700 mark felt pretty good. Felt felt pretty good. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but with some optimization, like a couple days of optimization, I'd say 500 to 700 would be pretty enjoyable. So it's yeah. just about learning, improving, and making uh, the next one better. Hells yeah. Hell you. On that note, yeah, if there are any other questions, we can uh, get more focused into our uh, Star Atlas segment. Yeah, uh, I do have one last video sure. from Leaks I just saw. Oh, right, right. He has a uh, You're showing me hacks on, hacks on screen? <laughs> <laughs> he must have uh, extra oh, yeah, fuel. <laughs> yeah, he was going for a long while here. In a <laughs> T-pose all the way to the Oni and then all the way over to Mud <clears throat> without landing once. So can we uh, have that for everyone? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> it would actually be pretty cool if there was some kind of boost race and everyone had like infinite boost for that. Could be a specific mode yeah. of every a smaller area, but everyone could just be fighting at every level going all the way up, maybe within a certain, a certain yeah. circumference. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. Yeah, and uh, that little door that we were just talking about, I think it was like around here, and you yep. can just see in all of them. So, <laughs> who left the door open? <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite funny seeing other people just like slowly moving about, at least going full capacity all the time. Yeah, good old, good old leaks, always helping us out. You know what? At least he didn't, you know, kill people. He was just boosting around. Yeah, he's getting good footage. <laughs> <laughs> Surveying the map. He's just boosting around, just chilling. <laughs> so he ends up going all the way over here. Taking the What is the, happening the here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have some traitors. The cabal. <laughs> traitors. <laughs> They're meeting on top of a rooftop. What? We have, we have something to figure Those out. Those are the multi accounters, uh, the, the multi guild <laughs> members just jumping from one to another, maybe. I don't know. I didn't see the name. So. Oh, hell no. I got, I'm going to have to examine that footage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we do uh, have some 
we just went through some of the uh, surge links, um, and then we have the based game. So there's two two games essentially with Star Atlas. If you're first time watching uh, live with us or after the fact, there's a browser based game called Star Based, and that's where the economy has been seeded and has been uh, bustling along very nicely. And you could play that with the NFT ships that you've owned all this time or that you purchase on the galactic marketplace. And then what you just finished seeing was the real engine five side and there's many game modes. So surge being a third person shooter, you got uh, time trial, you have dog fighting with ships uh, via waves of enemy ships. So definitely check that out on Epic games. But now, uh, yeah, we've been playing as a guild, uh, one of the largest guilds in the Star Atlas ecosystem, the Star Based, uh, Star Atlas Star Based, which is the browser game, and we did accomplish as Rome and the and as an Oni faction, uh, collectively cooperating and working together with other Oni faction guilds, the first Tier Two Star Based. So Woo, let's give go. yourselves a round of applause, Hell all, yeah. everyone in the chat, anyone who's Oni, and maybe even everyone who's just in the ecosystem, because holy moly, you know how expensive this was. Can we get a yeah. represent, man? That that's a big accomplishment. It, it, it was a big deal, W's and for the everyone, the, the, everyone knows that the big bottleneck on base upgrade was SDUs, and then of course, even though SDU uh, the meta yeah. on that's changed a bit, it's still a big deal. And uh, I can tell you, we uh, owe a, uh, Oni owes a debt of gratitude and a big shout out to fellow Roman uh, Neviolo. Oh, yeah. uh, who single-handedly uh, put in the overwhelming majority of SDUs into this base upgrade? Over 1.5 million. Oh my! Yeah. Wow. We were wow. we were yeah like I, I for one wasn't a, a huge scanner uh, in Sage Labs at all. So you know I was the more on the macro end of everything else on all the other gaming loops. So uh, crafting and mining and transport. But dude, we, we really hit the ground running, and he. If it wasn't for him, maybe yeah, we would get there a lot slower, a lot, sl a lot, lot slower. <laughs> <laughs> Team effort, yeah, no, that's awesome. Right on, indeed. So uh, yeah, I, I, on that note, want to add one other thing. You want to bring that screenshot back up there for a moment? Oh, oh, let's not even. No, talk we about know. It. Yeah, we we <laughs> we don't have the ability to. Oh, oh it's not on there, right? Uh, right in there, because you'd have to scroll down a little bit. Yeah, but oh no, it is on there. It's right there, Dom. What is up with this next tier of upgrade, bro? What 124 million. It just went up. <laughs> it went up like insane amount. That's like crazy. 46x or something. It's like if that took us 16 days to get to a tier two based on three million, what are we looking at? That's like a that's like a two-year, two-year upgrade just to tier three. <laughs> Hell okay. no. Okay, to be fair here, to be fair here, it should be hard, but also. Let, let Chris, you know, look at look at all this data. I'm sure I'm sure things will will change if they're impossible. You know, I think well, that was a typo. Yeah, that was a multi fat finger press for a whole week and a half. Anyways, but it, you know, by all means, I love a, a hard game. But I'm think I'm thinking more tier five six where it takes two years. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, no, the, the I, ultimate I hear you. difficulty. I hear you. Yeah, um, yeah, very early still. This is literally ground level of the game being built out uh, in iterations. So you know. Uh, with that it's always with a grain of salt that we're giving feedback but yeah it was a shock just to see that that number across the board not just for sdus but sheesh yeah no worries i i'm sure things will change seriously yeah yeah and uh virtual from rome he was the one who actually clicked the Ooh. upgrade button yeah. so we have the video here oh nice my god look at that yeah, His history on chain I need some like, I need some like dramatic music, man. Yeah, there is music in the video. Uh, can't hear it here, but oh. yeah, very cool. Don't want to get copyrighted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to Virtual and Navolio, who yeah, the king of SDUs. Dude, hell, hell yeah. yeah. Loving it, man. You guys killed it. No, that's actually super impressive. Still killing it. If you, if you look at uh, percentage points across the board, across all base upgrades, large margin, Oni. Large margin. Yep. Go, Oni. Let's go, baby. Mm -hmm. No competition. Step it up, Ooster and Mud. 
Booster came out the gate strong, but then they kind of like shot their load after 24 hours. And this <laughs> mud got a slow start, but then picked up the steam. They're almost on catching up to Ooster now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Mm-hmm. Really good. Shout out to Evi, the best go to uh, website. Keep track of all this stuff. Evi is amazing. And they Evi keep giving amazing. quick updates, man. <clears throat> and stuff. I was actually in a call with uh, our engineers the other day, and we were talking about Evi, and everyone was just like, Damn, this is really cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so no, even on the team, everyone nerds out about Evi. So yeah, if you, I, <laughs> I think Evi saved a few of us in in uh, labs. Like what? I got ships over there. What? Yeah, yeah. I still got stuff in that base. <laughs> right, right. Helped lo- locate a lot of stuff for for players who were transitioning from Star la- uh, Sage Labs to base. And shout out to Groove as well, another Oni Oni Guild Sly Guild. Yeah. Uh, with their automation tool, they're killing it with updates as well, and uh, so helpful in the space. If it wasn't for them, I don't know how many of us would yeah. be playing. Uh, it's the single most influential tool in all of the Star Atlas economy, the whole ecosystem. An externally made third-party tool. There's nothing right now that I think yep. that tops the impact that that has had, without a doubt. Without Absolutely. a doubt, I would say it's it's the biggest tool for sure, and it's also probably the biggest tool in the Star Atlas economy. At this point, yeah. like mm. without that, what would the Starless economy look like? Hey, exactly. Right. Yeah. Be a lot different. Yep. So <laughs> shout out to are. shout out to them and they do have <laughs> donation links. So you know, if you're on their website, you can either buy with their referral uh, link, uh, any ships on the Galactic Marketplace, or even just you know give whatever you can afford and uh, what you feel is right to uh, to these projects and developers in the space, the community developers and uh, and builders. It's very important. Yeah. Can't I mean, if you guys. Enough. If you guys use something a lot, don't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Donate. Mm-hmm. Donate Shout if out. you really enjoy it. If it's really helping you, donate so they can keep doing it. It also just helps build the, you know, not not just the Star Atlas economy, but also the Star Atlas world, you know? Like, there's people yeah. who want to build around and inside the Star Atlas universe. And if people see, hey, the, the community likes this tool a lot, it's super influential, So they're donating and making it, you know, so they can whatever, get more tools or maybe hire one more person to help out. You know, that's the kind of stuff that motivates someone else to build in the Star Atlas ecosystem the next time. Like, hey, oh, I I saw a slide do this. Maybe I have this idea. I'm going to try this. So if you use it a lot, yeah, consider it. Hell yeah. And now shout out to Brian as well. He he was on Twitter, did 50,000 Atlas um and then it was a it was a, a chain of individuals bodhi as well jumped in there uh nord uh, the uh, star uh, Fe- the phoenix titan ship uh, <clears throat> purchaser and a handful of other people were uh, donating yeah, as well so get that trade yeah, going. And, and, and speaking of brian and the many and as well as the many others that have taken the time to help people get up to speed with using the tools and the automation so, yeah, it's a, that's the the community at large. Those that have gone before have showed up to uh, to help those who are just getting started. So pretty cool thing. Right on. Well, what else we got fancy going down the line here for Star Atlas? So up next, we have the new medium data runner on the marketplace. So this is the Fimble BIOS Ranger, equipped rap- rapid scanning, swift evasion, ensuring you're always a step ahead of cosmic threats with a 25% discount right now. Yep. Specs on par with the uh, Visu Sopod. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's uh, making it one of the one of the data runner ships that do not have a uh, food requirement for scanning right yeah it's interesting that there's another medium data runner now so definitely going to be a lot of competition between these two i think uh, this is at like 2000 on the marketplace right now and the pod is 1000 so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there isn't there's only like a couple there so yeah my not see any movement on the BIOS Ranger until the Opal is completely gone, or until it rises above that, I guess. But yeah, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like the style of the ship. Um, 
And for the most part, yeah, you know, I wasn't the biggest on scanning, but I do have Opod. So, you know, they're, they're at it now. And uh, with the recent SDU change, uh, I'm seeing more SDUs uh, than before. So although it's still a little pricey as far as fees are concerned. Uh, yeah, I'd say from the feedback that's being talked about, it's not the most lucrative <laughs> gaming loop anymore scanning, um, yeah. <laughs> for scanning. And you're at a loss for maybe only focusing on that. So I, I wonder, you know, as we are still early, the specific professions that you'd want to pick up, you know, at some point, maybe you won't be able to do everything and you're going to have to niche down into a certain uh, industry. And so, yeah. but, uh, but I'm thinking, why would anyone do something that's not profitable? Although it's very important, you know, the demand right. would have to be there. Absolutely. So for it to be a thing people do. I mean, I'm curious. One, sorry, go for it. Go for it. Oh, I was just going to say one of the things that comes to mind is I do recall at one point Chipto talking about there potentially coming a day where there will be different types of data modules mm -hmm. to scan for. And maybe some of those will have a greater value, which would then re-inject some life and purpose into right. scanning as a day, as a loop. Right, right. Go ahead, Dom. I'm just curious. What do you guys think of um, of like Star Atlas going towards um, maybe it being better to be in a in a niche, and then as time goes on, you know, maybe if a niche becomes overpopulated, then people like start to go to a different niche, and then it kind of like um, it kind of spreads itself out through that because everyone wants to get to a niche that you know is going to be more profitable, yeah. of course. And it spreads out that way. But what do you, I'm just curious, what do you guys think of yeah. like that kind of like that road where everything it just becomes the best move to probably just be in one niche and focus on that? I, I think it's brilliant, but it's going to have to have a progression cultivation tree that mm -hmm. makes it so that over time you are you are like you are specializing it's almost like when you play an rpg and you can choose your your path and you want to make these strengths for your, yourself better in this particular area to kind of for whatever your specialization is so if you are going to choose a career path and if you're going to keep that career path interesting to a person just wants to focus on that when there's so many other loops available then there's going to need to be some interesting progression to it that a person can stay focused on where it's the game loop is expansive yeah that's definitely where the the careers would come into play mm -hmm. that we have planned in the roadmap so cool yeah it's all a matter of like what the timeline is i know it's all eta right uh, the eta yeah. is tbd but uh but the sooner the better because then it really cements and solidifies in people's minds of like okay you know, right now it's been a lot of theory crafting and uh jumping from one type of ship just because you want to be a fighter, but there's no combat, for example. And then once combat comes, then you'll see an uptick like we have uh, for every update or new game loop that was introduced or update to the current game loops. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, over time, I see it working out. It's just more of like, a, uh, I guess you just wait and see. But you know, anything that would be, you know, the new roadmap is fantastic too. It, it, it just helps with people understanding where we're at and where we're going. So mm -hmm. uh, in time for sure, but right on no one should be able to do everything that's something i'd uh i'd stand by unless you uh you know and then i think about the crew as well like if we're up if we're going to be running and bicycling and and cycling and, and upgrading our crew members mm -hmm. uh the xp in the game uh across the board that you earn for data like i just wonder how many how many different types of characters are we going to need to upgrade and update or increase their xp depending on the industry or the profession you want, you know, like uh, if we're going to buy like for people who have a like 10,000 crew members uh, are, are is this, is, if crafting is all they do is that, I guess that's all they'll specialize in, right. As they have been, or uh, the intentions behind having so many crew outside of just crafting only because we need to get a star base upgraded. Like where's the individual aspect to having so many, you know, like if I want to play with one character, the hero's journey of like one character, is this, kind of out of the picture because we're going to have the need, the, the need to have so many crew members. And this is something I just juggle with in my head. I think it depends on the experience, right? Like Sage is more like you're commanding this whole entire fleet, this army of fleets. Uh, and that's where that those crew would come in handy. And then in the Unreal Engine environment, right. you're, you're like, you are manning a crew member and you're getting on your ship 
And then maybe you have, depending on the ship, you have crew with you. And then you have a small group of people. But also in the roadmap, you know, these games connect. These these games are going to connect. These these games are going to be like whatever happens, you know, like it's it's going to be a connected experience. Um, and so I'm I'm sure like a lot of these questions that you have are going to kind of resolve themselves over time. Yeah. And I know it's another TBD, yeah. like you're saying, but yeah. I hope we don't lose sight of that and that that be, that actually materializes because, you know, as you're saying, the hero's journey or your ability to live vicariously through this right. character that you invested time and energy into kind of loses some of its weight if that's spread across an entire, you know, deck of cards for <laughs> your different crew. You know? Yeah. Um, one other thing I was curious about, I don't know if the, there's anything you're aware of on this, but man, I can tell you it'd be really nice if we were to see that LP sto store sooner than later. And yeah. I think it's a creative way to ease the LP to Atlas redemption pressure. Uh, it gives people something else, uh, be it, I don't care, be it cosmetics or anything else that you could put in there that makes it interesting. That is something that I think would divert a lot of that pressure and a lot of that LP to the store um, freeing up, you know, other people that have been wanting to cash in for Atlas, but have kind yeah. of been like tough time. I, I actually completely agree. I completely agree. Um, yeah. I can't really say anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I do. So, I do so, what we're, so, what we're basically, so what we're basically asking is when is it going to launch? <laughs> 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 But I, yeah, I agree, man. It, it's going to just be uh, an adventure, just looking at what's available, and you know, at that point, hopefully, what is available on the LP market isn't just lackluster, and it actually contributes to that uh, exciting feeling of like, hey, I put in the time to save and hoard LP, not claiming for Atlas for you know, and we have a lot of LP. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of LP, so I wonder what the cost of these th these items are going to be in um, mm -hmm. in the actual uh, marketplace for LP. <laughs> One billion. On 10, 10 billion LP for an air freshener for your ship. <laughs> Just for the air freshener. I feel like some some crazy mother trucker would buy something like that. Totally. <laughs> and hang it with pride from the mirror. Because <laughs> you know how many ships have a rear view mirror, you know. Of course. <laughs> Funny stuff. I feel like some thimble ships would. Yeah, Loby. I can see yeah, the one. The smaller, the smaller yeah. ones. Loby does have one actually. But yeah. I, dude, I can see what I can. I can put one in my backlight. You know, it's not gonna do anything. <laughs> it's not gonna do anything. But uh, for the aesthetic. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, you guys want to move on? Yeah. Yeah. Do. What do we got? Sure. So this week there was a new Star Atlas auto approve feature, which is pretty cool. It allows led your users to auto approve designated in-game mechanics, no more constantly clicking your ledgers, yeah. and allow other wallets users to designate and customize what actions in game are auto approved. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Congratulations yeah. on those using Ooh. ledgers. It was it it was the experience was glorious right up until I got stuck and I couldn't get out. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, I ran into that bug. Like my whole crew is like taken up right now. They're hot. It's a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you want from a Star Atlas? We, have we gave you all crew. our SDUs. We have thousands of crew missing in space. God damn it! <laughs> Half mercy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but definitely nice to not uh, just even the first experience of what this is. This is on my ledger, but I'm not having to clickety click. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I for one never used the ledger, so call me crazy. But uh, yeah, I was just using Hot Wallet. You're, you're as bare I was, back in it. I was <laughs> I was going raw right. dogging. He's raw dogging his way through land. <laughs> I knew that was coming. If, I did. <laughs> My crew will experience what it really means to work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, but yeah, for the most part, uh, it, it's still just a safe. You just have to, you know, be a little bit extra cautious with uh, how clickety clicky you feel on any given day, uh, whether you're drunk or not. So, yeah, just be safe out there no matter what you're doing. And uh, it's great to see this launched. Don't drink in base. Yeah. yeah Don't drink right. in base. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, yeah, let us know if you've been struggling with a with a ledger. I know some people broke their ledger or just stopped working at some point over the course of a year and a half, or, or the months of playing uh, Sage Labs rather. Um, yeah, I, I just I couldn't do that to my ledger. I didn't see it necessary, but uh, safety is paramount. Yeah, mine's still going after I think it might be almost two years now. Oh, congratulations! You have one of the better models. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Might not be like that long, but yeah, seems pretty good. I think uh, some of the newer models are a bit pricier. You got about fifty clicks left in it, man. <laughs> uh, Make it count. <laughs> Make it count. <laughs> try, try to get a double click in there. Maybe yeah. it signs two at the same time. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Uh, I know this has been. An interesting topic that released yesterday, no, today. So, in a strategic move to mark by a cashless transaction, Star Atlas integrates multi chain ventures, including all intellectual property or project tokens. Tokes holders will be able to bridge their tokens to Solana and exchange these tokens for cultivated cultivation facilities in Star Atlas. Real quick, I just want to say I'm not going to comment on this, and I just, just, just in case someone's looking forward to me saying something here, I don't want to mis misrepresent uh, Michael in in this uh, acquisition. So, but of course, I don't, I don't mind being on the on the show when they're talking about it. But I just wanted yeah, to let yeah. people know. Indeed, uh, man. Where do, yeah, where, where where do, do we start? Good <laughs> okay. Lord. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Jessica. Go ahead. Yeah, you, you, you go ahead. Go ahead first, Ray. Uh, well, I don't know where I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. Okay. Um, I'm not going to be long on this because I woke up this morning and I didn't catch because I, I couldn't play. I uh, actually didn't take part in the second test round yesterday. I got caught up IRL. And then I saw the announcement this morning of the yesterday's announcement on the Discord of what fans you just read out loud here. And we're showing to Twitter if you're just listening in. And Tokes is uh, apparently, I, I only got halfway through the article. So this is still fresh to me. I kind of read some of the dialogue going uh, going on in the foundation room. I'm not totally, I'm, I'm semi, I'm, I'm, I'm more neutral than anything, uh, I'd say at this point. All I'm asking is way more information on what, what this entails. My first, I, my first question was, is this all on chain as far as the original uh, supply and its holders? And, you know, because it, it needs to be, it needs to make sense, and uh, you know, I, I I read how some people weren't even okay with um, how it was announced in between the test you know, on on 420. You know, yes, it's a to it's a you know marijuana based company. Uh, so I see I see how it was uh, announced in this way. Uh, so I'm not, not a big quarrel with me on that end, but more more like the preparation for the announcement with all the questions that w were known to follow that were known to to follow up with that people were, were going to have in the community so uh, i just want more information more details and then ultimate you know ultimately transparency on what the the what it's all gonna pan out and look like you know if uh, i know jess you have some some uh, heavy hitters uh, of thoughts that i kind of read through as well not just in rome but uh, uh but in the foundation room so yeah by all means let it rip Man, there, there's so many th aspects of this. So, I mean, from from the limited information that we do have, it basically looks like Star Atlas acquired multi-chain ventures and all their intellectual property. Uh, and what does that actually mean? We don't know what the IP is. We don't really know what the value, if there's actually any valuable IP that was acquired, because right now it doesn't really look like the community is benefiting from this. Is there is there's a new asset? which is, uh, you know, these, these uh, essentially they're going to be like claim stakes that produce uh, some of the R9s. We're not sure all of which the right. carbon is mentioned, biomass is mentioned, and then some plants that are associated with the cultivation, cultivation facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, it's, so you have the emissions there, but th there's just so much of this that to me doesn't make sense. And as you mentioned, timing was one, it kind of felt it was slipped in there with other distractions rather than a time where there could be like an AMA, where there could be a town yeah, hall, right. where there could be like more uh, information provided and questions asked and answered. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to lean in to say that that feels intentional. Can I comment on that? Sure. The, oh, I will I will say 
The only reason it came out when it did is because it was April 20th at 4.20 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> There was, I promise yeah. you, there was no like, uh, there was no like, shove it in at this point because so people don't see it or anything like that. It was literally just 420, 420. And I know that's not like uh, the most yeah. elegant of reasons, but I've just, uh, just wanted to comment on that. And I do get the whole element of, hey, this yeah. is, it's, it's tokes. And so therefore, 420 on 420. However, I can't imagine that the decision and conversation went like, hey, let's do that then. And you know what? We'll just set it and forget it and not be around to address anything because no one's going to have anything to say about it. Because if that was the case, then you kind of hire your own supply. I don't think that that could have been possible. So my question is, is why is the whole idea to let the community fume and kind of cry itself to sleep <laughs> and kind of get that out of its system, then come back and address it? Because there's so many aspects of this that I have questions about. And it feels like a bailout to me personally. I'm speaking personally. I'm not speaking for Rome. I'm not speaking for the rest of the metaverse nomads. I'm speaking for me personally. This feels like paying off an old debt. And I have trouble understanding now where the value is for the Star Atlas community. I see where it is for tokes. And so right. initially I was thinking, does that mean tokes holders, like a whole bunch of people out there that were mm, so sad, tokes didn't do well. Sometimes projects fail and you got to put, got to let them go and do their thing rather than bring that on to Star Atlas because you know what? Goodwill is a bank account, and this is a big withdrawal without really understanding what's going on here. And so it has this appearance to me that the people that it's benefiting are are the founding team of Tokes. Because if you look at their tokenomics, 71% of the distribution is for the team. Yeah. So is that who gets the benefit? So here you have this asset that goes on that's going to be available for a six-month window that you have to get through through uh, Tokes token. And, and then it's going to have an emission that, in my opinion, is taking away from the economy. It's diluting the value of those resources within the economy for emissions for assets that never paid into Star Atlas as an ecosystem to community. It's something that came externally. And so I am struggling to understand what the motivation would be for that. And I'll add to that, Star Atlas, when its white paper came out, it clearly states in there, and I can, I've got it in front of me, uh -huh. I can read it to you here. Polis governance token. Externally, control of Polis will enable the gaming community to influence decision-making of Star Atlas development team. This will follow a period of centralization of decision-making, likely two to three years of game development and balance. At the conclusion of the centralized period, holders will be able to influence game economics. Uh, inflation rates, et cetera, asset release schedule, game direction, and will otherwise provide some degree of ownership in a development decision making. Well, it's been two to three years, and we still don't know what the updated uh, timeline is for DAO votes and, uh, and the use of Polis. And why am I bringing this up now? Because I can say with a fair amount of certainty that had this gone to a DAO vote, it would not have passed. So at what point does Star Atlas as a team start making decisions that are in alignment with what the DAO would be voting in favor of? And when does that happen? Is it a hard stop? Is there a gradual time? I think it's important for us now to better understand this timeline because me personally, as a lot of people have, I banked a lot of polis and I didn't bank it just to have it there for five years hanging out. I did it because I wanted to have a voice in decisions like this being made, and I didn't have an opportunity to have one here, and I'm curious as to why. I'm curious to understand more about what this is and why we. F I feel like we're holding the bag for an, an old debt that, uh, that, that, you know, that the team wanted to make good on. And my suspicions are that there's other people on the Star Atlas team that weren't a part of the Tokes team that are going like, oh, yeah, this doesn't feel good. But I'm going to reserve in the rest of my judgment to be able to hear more about what's going to be said right. on it. And I wish that would happen now. It should have been released at a time where there could have been a conversation. Yeah. So spot on and uh, well said uh, on your end. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still in the camp of neutral, although I agree with uh, a lot of what's being said for uh, being against it. And uh, really, really hard to to not agree there. Uh, 
personally, but you know, it's funny how in this space of Web3 gaming, whatever is announced and how it's announced, and, and depending on what what gets launched and what doesn't get launched, you know, why are people maybe upset about this more than maybe something else that should clearly have some attention at the time, you know, of it when it was launched. So, so it, it's a really it's a real back and forth type of situation that we're in. And and recently in the foundation room chat, there was a poll that Wagner held. I can't find it myself, but it was about uh, the idea of taking resources or having or, or uh, to expedite the DAO's creation, and let us know. Let me know if you could find it. I was trying to search th this morning uh, while doing other things, but if you guys remember in the chat, definitely chime in here. Um, there was a whole conversation piece, like you know, the, after the first time of Wagner having his late night Friday night wine session. Uh, for, uh, th this was another one of those. Um, maybe he didn't have wine, but he asked, "What did we think to have the DAO created?" And, and again, something like this is not just spur of the moment planned and announced. Like th th I mean, spur of the moment announced. This was like thought through. This was planned to see how it could probably get worked in to be somewhat of a success or to, to be salvaged as something that could be you know, spun in in a way that could you know, help not just themselves, but maybe the ecosystem and the economy of the Star Atlas. But again, it, there needs to be more questions asked and more you know, questions answered, uh, more transparency and uh, and uh, yeah, ultimately it's it's we're, we're looking to be sold this idea. All right, so um, how how it's packaged and delivered to us, not just announced as yes, this will be the case. I totally uh, am a believer of what DAOs can be. You know, I've been here since 2016. It's it's always been a glass a glass shell of what it could be. Like DAOs have never been what what they were planned to be, even till this day, right? Uh, fully decentralized anything is is not the case with DAO operating in some projects, maybe, but. There's all these variables that go into play with DAOs. So in the Star Atlas specific, the DAO was put on the back burner after FTX. There's a lot of, um, you know, not much at all maybe is happening with the DAO, unless it could be clarified here. Uh, but the fact that Wagner asked that question to see, hey, how about we, we take money, we get the DAO functioning, and then we we have proposals ready to go to get voted on. This sure surely would have been one of those. Uh, I can't imagine if we had a functional DAO, this would just be passed without any votes taking place so yeah. uh, and then yeah. with with that we would have way more information right there wouldn't be a proposal sure. of this happening with the lack of information that we have uh, as it was announced just yesterday there would be a freaking whole pitch deck of like hey this is why it's good for you this is what you should expect this is why we all need it and we should all vote for it just like you know jupiter's launch pad you know like there's, there's so much work that gets put into a whole dow and how and how voting takes place for uh, um, yeah clear communications is is what i'm yeah. mainly uh, asking for if, more understanding and if that is the goal of of star atlas to move in that direction you know would now be the best time to start with that behavior leaning into that you know it's it, it just it it feels a bit like let me put it this way i'm curious to hear chris his opinion on what the impact is on the economy That's a good idea and was yeah. it and was I mean, was it a, was he approached that way? Hey, is this something we can do? And what will be the impact? Because you saw we just saw all those uh, tears up there. There's going to be a lot of emissions associated with that. So there is going to be an impact in the economy and the economy is going to is probably a long way off before that impact is going to be marginal. So like, yeah, well, how do decisions like this impact what we're trying to build here? And I say we because it is a we. Right. Uh, and totally. And then uh, right on. Thanks, Zamzor, uh, for sharing that with us, the link to the actual um, uh, what I was mentioning with Wagner. And he he goes here and we could pull it on screen. Question. This was on uh, April 10th at 7.20 p.m. He goes, question, if we're able to engage in an, in an outside fully vetted team to initiate work on the DAO immediately, would stakeholders be uh, amendable to us at, at Autonoma? Uh, uh, seeking reimbursement for the external development costs of building out the full feature suite uh, for governance functionality. This would still likely be a four to five month project, but it could start very soon. And, you know, the conversation uh, go, continues from that point on, but the, the proposal is sitting at 200 or $300,000. So the projected mm -hmm. costs for this 200, uh, 299 or $300,000 and uh, pretty much, yeah, there, there's a conversation around it, so I have to go back to refresh myself. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that that's what I was mentioning. If that is an associated poll, it looks like it was in favor. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't an actual poll; it was just him writing that, tagging everyone here, maybe testing the waters. Um, 
but I don't see why anyone would be against having a functional DAO. We're voting. Yeah. Is, is, I think uh, it's imperative. I mean, if you consider the five-year lockup on Polis, it, the, the, the Polis voting power uh, multiplier we got looked great, but it sure is on a downward trend before I've even had a chance to leverage the Polis voting power. So when, when does that come into play? I think it's the, the uh, it's, it's important that it happens soon. Right. And then he goes a little um, embed here, the project overview for the DAO and uh, jumping to the, the second line or the second paragraph of sorts. The Star Atlas DAO is guided uh, by seven core principles, quality, purpose, safety, transparency, immersiveness, representation, and censorship resistance. The, glo the, the goal of this project is to implement the user interface for the proposal lifecycle through several phases of voting, discussion, and refining. A decision is made. So front end, you know, next JS, uh, JavaScript app built upon existing Star Atlas governance sites, and then a backend te uh, technology to be determined on chain operations already developed, and then roles, foundation member, council member, voting enabled citizens, uh, wallet mm -hmm. with polis, voting disabled citizen, and then visitor. So these would be the uh, yeah. roles. So one other thing I want to mention, this is a, a comment uh, from uh, King Tread here. Um, I also don't like that Star Atlas could potentially be associated with weed or drugs. Regardless of what your your take is on it, I live in Amsterdam, so I mean, I'm kind of lenient with regards to it happening all around me. But when you're building something in a marketplace, the more things like that you do with an association, you are niching down the appeal that you have. Um, you're segmenting what your potential audience based on decisions like that. And that's another reason I think a DAO vote would be important. And it's not like, I, I, I think it could be interesting to have like stim packs and even the cultivation farms and things like that within the game. But Tox wasn't needed to do that, nor was this the time. I think as the project became more mature, you could introduce things like that after it already had broader appeal. So I think there's there's some danger in in that, and that is something that should be considered as well. And again, that's where the community is, as a whole, who has invested time and energy over the span of years now, along with the team, uh, these are conversations to be had. Yeah. And um, the actual poll does exist, and it was shared thanks to Lightning Crafts, aka Yon and Zamzor again for finding the, the initial um but uh, what is it looking like here it says uh yeah so the vote was 52 yes and only one no <laughs> that sounds that's uh, it's pretty close but that sounds in favor yeah yeah for uh, i want to i want to interview that one <laughs> <laughs> i'm not the, having it <laughs> the swiss the swift knife it's like Look that one up. that one dentist who says no. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just gonna click no just because. Yeah. <laughs> Rebel. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Dominic, too, for messaging that. Um... Yeah, so so the short of it, there's still some unknowns. Um, I, I'm just curious, like what those things could be that at least lighten the load. I mean, a couple of things that I just threw out there, spitballing is like, is there some unusual IP that's uh, coming along with it that's going to benefit Star Atlas? I'm trying to look for the things that are actually a direct benefit to Star Atlas rather than something that's withdrawing from it. Um, is there going to be uh, an airdrop of tokes to kind of subsidize uh, existing community members based on Polis Holdings or VWAP and Wallet that allows them, that kind of mm -hmm. subsidize them deciding maybe they want to gain some of these NFTs rather than there being this six month you know, moratorium that prevents uh, Atlas purchase. And I, again, I thought we were looking to strengthen Atlas. And here we are kind of now giving another means where an asset within the ecosystem has another means of being purchased that completely doesn't bring anything to the ecosystem. It's basically just benefiting external. Uh, it's There's only external benefit the way that I see it. The only internal benefit is specific to the teams of overlap that between Tokes team members and Star Atlas. And with that, I guess we're just going to have to wait on more information to see what comes of it. But I'm really curious what it could be. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm down to learn more and uh, have it all make sense and definitely hear from you know, both Wagner and even Chris from the economic side of things and how it all mm -hmm. will make sense. Um, but yeah, a lot of things you need to be forward thinking a, a little bit more in this space sometimes <laughs> than just a, a month or two or even a year or two. Uh, as as long as that might sound, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm down for whatever conversations are going to be had around it, and 
And uh, and at this point, is it official? I, I don't think anything really in Web three games are official if the if a lot of the community voices against it. You know, it would just not. You know, Gala Games is like just the perfect example. It's just like you know, if if any project building in space wants to know what not to do, just check out uh, Gala Games. Um, you know, oh, it, them sneaky bastards were padding the prices back in the day. I had to call them out on that in the video. Yeah, it's 10%. Like, what are you talking about? That slippage in the marketplace. No, that's you taking the price of your NFTs, adding 10% on top, right. and then saying it's market slippage. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you see it till this day. There's like, there's a, there's, it, uh, they take it, like a lot of projects take advantage of the lack of understanding and knowledge on, yeah. uh, on the space, the chain, and everything that it involves, uh, depending on how long you've been around and how, um, uh, how spread out you are with understanding that slippage thing is crazy wow. yeah it's like yeah. blame it on on the people <laughs> you're gaslighting people for <laughs> calling them stupid essentially or crybabies mm -hmm. or roy boys and it's just attacking the character of the community you know as a whole we're just here excited looking forward to what is to become um a great fun game but uh yeah web3 is a different beast so depending on how you introduce something and how you package it and market it you know it's either going to go left or right <laughs> up or down <laughs> but i have faith and uh yeah i've been here for longer than i could count on my fingers and i look forward to it with a lot of these projects th there needs to be a middle ground uh with a lot of these launches so like just was saying with every token even just as we had the titans extravaganza episode uh you know nord from from uh heimdall you know although it's a separate entity with this with uh, how they're launching their NFTs, the tokenomics, it just it just makes sense, right? There's a there's a cause, there's a there's a use case, there's a reason, and it all kind of lines up. So what you think, what you say, and what you do is just all uh, lined up, and it's not kind of uh, trying to hoodwink. You know, not saying that Star Atlas is doing this, or you know, Gala clearly did, uh, and more than once. But yeah, transparency and community is the way. And that's what we that's what we always strive to do to be to be completely open and honest here we always want to be we always want to respect our community because as soon as like the community is going to find out everything anyway just respect your community and you know just, i'm sure michael will will talk about it and i'm sure he'll he'll give you guys the reasons and all that kind of jazz that you guys are mm. have questions about well there's definitely a solution man power to the dow <laughs> i mean yeah, i know that's something he's super in favor of the dow are the people <laughs> but uh, ultimately, yeah, I'd love if Wagner, you know, open invite always for anyone on the team. And uh, yeah, if you want, you could come on the show at one point, uh, at any point in the future, talk on it. It's love kind of unfortunate comment. timing because he's uh, he's traveling right yeah, now. Yeah, there's like yeah. a bunch of events that he's going to. Um, he's in Dubai right now. And then I know there's some some uh, some a Asia events as well. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think he's going to be traveling for like a month. So it's just bad timing as well. All around, I guess that's the the number one question. Why the, why on four twenty? Mm -hmm. If it's uh, I understand the four twenty, but oh really? come on, bad timing. <laughs> you know just he just said bad timing. Well, yeah, you got to have the guy around. Drop yeah. that, like, check out. <laughs> Let's see what everyone thinks. Press the red button, ship it. You know that that gif of just shipping it. I respect it. I respect that type of approach. You know, like it's almost it's more of like the ripping the band aid off. Because what other way are you to mention this if the DAO isn't? anywhere near being completed and we still need to get it done with three hundred thousand dollars worth in four to five months so it's kind of like could we could we have waited you know could 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 all of this been just postponed for five months if we all had the dow and you know we voted and like there's just a lot of kind of like why now for what reason you know and then why not a little later when we have a dow or you know the economic impacts on the game chris you know like was was uh like just mentioned was there a whole cabal group talk session on it and seeing how it would impact not just community sentiment like okay at the end of the day we're all just numbers and we're we're consumers of a product here right so yes community is good brotherhood's fine you know these are all like great words and yeah uh, that make people feel good but at the end of the day you're running a business so that's a whole another uh ball game but i digress because that's a uh, reopening pandora's box but uh but yeah uh i'm interested uh, to learn more i'm excited nevertheless and this yeah. is in th this line item that we're covering here with the tokes is not the end of the show. <laughs> we do have other line items to, to cover, so bear with us. Yeah, one of which is 
Athea this week. They created a Hall of Fame and Wall of Shame. So hey, we're going spicy back to back. Wow. Mm-hmm. They're, they're throwing names under the bus. They know what they're doing. They're playing the propaganda game. Oh, I, oh wow. You guys blurred the Wall of Shame. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> who are, who are oh, you? Never mind, never mind. We're not blowing the wall of shame. All right. Well, you know all you? this stuff's on chain, man. So I don't. I, I think they yeah, were yeah, totally yeah. fine with with putting. Yeah, this I'm, up, so I'm right? just joking. And for the record, there's some maybe some individuals in the space. Sar- sarcasm goes over some people's heads depending on where you're at, the culture and traditions you have. So, you know, for what it's worth, I was just joking, and I might have to, you know, uh, it is what it is because it's all on chain. Like Jester saying, it's all transparent. You just got to look below the surface, and you'll find whatever you want. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's pretty. Speaking of Hall of Shame, I'm I'm curious about how many of those Athians have actually been ponying up resources for the bases and Oni before they slip on over to Ooster for for a surge. What's shame. up with that? Shame, shame, uh, shame, <laughs> shame, shame, shame. What were you gonna say fancy hat? But yeah, no, it's super interesting that they are doing this and. You can see all like the wallet addresses. Before even funny if there was uh, like the wallet name that they gave it <laughs> right next to it. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, there is a lot of knowledge about whose wallet it's whose. Well, I guess like Wales, and this I think is for Wales. So yeah, here we have it. Interesting. Yeah, man. This is cool because I live for the drama, you know? Right, right. Well, this yeah, is, hold a shame. There's just going to be so much drama going going forward. And inner, like, inner guild drama, you know, cross-faction drama, inner-faction drama. Just makes yeah. it all interesting, you know? Like, it's a game, but at the same time, it's an ecosystem. It's a, it's a universe, and it's a bunch of people. You know, I, and I, I, I find stuff like this kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, it gets individual. It should get individuals to learn more about these different factions. I mean, these different guilds in the space. Because, like for example, coexist, they're like the one of the second biggest guilds in Oni. But come on, the lira is crap. Inflation. Like, there's reasons why people are playing the game and, and do and taking certain actions depending on where you're at in the world, uh, for the most part. So yeah, depending on where these guilds are located and um, what their their goals are, yeah, it, it could it could be different for every guild for why. You might see them or not see them on a list somewhere. Yeah, and talking about lists, we have a few more here. So this is by Stephen Sabol, and this is the uh, soul used by all the top games in Solana. So we can see the fees paid in this last column here. And uh, three different instances for Star Atlas, so... Yeah, quite a lot of soul. I guess around 3,000, roughly. I don't know if I should be proud or cry. <laughs> <laughs> so is the other, is that considered like UE, UE5? Is that like... Um... Uh, so Honeyland and Aurori and General Pets and... Atlanta. No, I was talking about the other for where it started. The first yeah, one. Not, not sure, oh, actually. Oh. Well, it has so the most active... I guess that could be just like staking fees, like people locking in Atlas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's interesting. So, that's more than star based so far, though. Yeah, I yeah. Look at the transactions per player for Sage. <laughs> it's crazy. Thirty one thousand nine hundred transactions per player in Sage. Yeah, that's crazy. And half of those were were fancy hat clicking. <laughs> 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 But yeah, that's like seventy percent of all Solana fees went to that's Star. You know, came from Star Alice. Yeah. So Star Alice at this point is Solana. I feel yeah, like super interesting to see I this. Agree. Don't fade Solana. I mean, don't fade. Yeah, don't fade Solana, but also Star Alice. <laughs> There's something <laughs> happening. That's about... people, are, people are coming around. Mm-hmm. 267,000 USD in, in fees. Sage fees. Wow. So far, or the past 90 days. Well, wow. damn. <laughs> 90 days. Ugh. That's a short amount of time. 
Oh, Half of that came in the past few weeks in priority fees. <laughs> oh. Don't remind me. Uh, and Stephen Sabor gave us another tweet this week. So gross monthly Atlas emissions. And we can see the faction awards starting to kick in here. Yeah. And yeah, it does seem total emissions are a bit down from March and February. So, but yeah, I think it will start to go up again as uh, everything kind of widens down apart from star based. And yeah, I think that purple is going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not financial advice. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see when the score that's this light green goes down. It's been. Long time dominator for missions. Do we, where were we able to see at one point how many how, the assets that are still in score and, and in, uh, in labs compared to, uh, in that had already migrated to base? Um, I'm think, curious how many people are still, how many people are just going to be forgotten and camped out in score even after there's no more emissions? A lot. <laughs> Hanging out. <laughs> looking, looking like John Travolta looking around like, what's what's going on here? Right. A lot of people checked out since last cycle and whatever they're, they probably wrote it off and uh, closed up shop. So maybe once uh, Star Atlas really gets, uh, uh, that's another thing. Are you always, are we always going to be able to, let's say for those individuals who left their stuff on Sage Labs, is it f- always going to be open to withdraw your ships or? Absolutely. Are, yeah. Will they be, that would be, be, that would be terrible if you couldn't. Like, can you imagine someone coming back three months later? Ships came out of a coma. <laughs> came out of a got towed, bro. <laughs> like, <They> got towed. <laughs> You're done, bud. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Start from a- so you gotta, get- gotta buy it back out of the impound. Straight to the Dow, yeah. You gotta buy it from the Dow yeah. now. <laughs> no, so, uh, I, no, that's super important that people are always able to get their assets somehow, some way. Like it should never be okay. I'm yeah. I'm coming back to Star Atlas. I had some ships in Sage Labs. Oh, but Sage Labs isn't even around anymore, so I guess my ships are just gone. No, it should never be like that. So fear not. Yeah, hopefully we don't have like a hundred game ideas that we had to jump to and from up until we have an instance that's constant. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a, a dream. Maybe we only, yeah. maybe only one more for combat, and then from that point on. Yeah, well, I wouldn't imagine. At some point, there's just problem. a tool where you can see across all the game IDs and be able to just pull your assets out. You know, a dash, one single dashboard. Once we get to a place where yeah. there's enough game IDs, where you want to do that, maybe Evi, yeah. you know, tackles that. Yeah. Yeah. So Aphia's DAX statistics actually sorts by all the game IDs. So this top one is by score. Let's see, Aphia still has about two point three in there. Club has four point two huh. million and Rome has about seven hundred and fifty K. And if we scroll the way down, this is starvation and saged. So yeah, I can see a lot of like differentiations between all mm. the different things. So yeah. Sweet. And uh yeah, I think the next things by Afi as well. We have the ship sales for this week. Oh, so hey. the Roosh. Roosh. Look at the Five Roosh. Golly. Yeah, and uh, I like how they added this now. So I think this is the average yeah. price. Oh, that is a good change, yeah. Yeah, so 778k sold at $6.45. Wow. 11 Armstrong imps sold at 12k. 49 imp taps sold at 1,100 and 59 imp tips sold at 340. 7 R8 sold at 2,500. Seems like a bargain for an R8. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of emphasis there on those miners. Yeah, man. It's uh, looking good for Star Atlas. And uh, if if you caught those cheap uh, Rouches and uh, yeah, uh, we I think the crew members were postponed, uh, postponed, pushed back a bit. Uh, Dom, I think there was an announcement or someone said it. I forget from the team. Uh, we're not getting crew. Uh, we're getting maybe a little later than expected. We have something cool. Um, Michael's going to Solana Crossroads, 
and I believe he's presenting on either the 10th or 11th. There's going to be something cool there. I don't know exactly. I've I've seen Michael talk about it in Foundation Room, but I don't right, want right. to uh, sure. I don't want to leak anything. But something cool there. Sweet. I'm surprised that we're not seeing any uh, any uh, freighters on here. Like, uh, do people feel like they got that part of their supply chain sorted out and they're going after the miners and the crew right now? Well, I assume that's some still sold. This is just uh, the top five trading volume, I think. Yeah. And uh, the total this week was 874K. So, yeah, pretty impressive. For nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one week. And the bulk of that and the extra, extra small. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the current gamers, the current players are needing crew. There's <laughs> a bottleneck for us, the most active players. So, not surprised. For a lot of new people coming in, it's like, where do you start? Do you buy a big ship right yeah. out the gate? You have to learn all this stuff. And for why I'm, uh, I'm mentioning here NeoSwap, you know, they came out with an announcement on, on Twitter, uh, working with uh, Star Atlas with special packs for beginners. Uh, so, you got starter mm -hmm. packs. And this could be the less this could be the, the easiest way to get in you know outside of just after the fact doing a due diligence but uh you know depending on what what how you approach it uh, it's good to see that there's a reasonably priced and um uh, starter pack of sorts for people to get in and to start playing so you got the xx small bundle the x small bundle you got the small bundle <laughs> so a greek and mick you got fimble lobies visa solos and then i'm not sure who put these together you know i didn't go that deep in the rabbit hole but uh were these suggested by the star atlas team i don't know dom if you have any you know color commentary here or actual knowledge on how this all came to be and who was the big brain to set up these types of packs because there's more yeah. coming soon so like are you guys working closely or is it just kind of like so uh, i was i was i was involved when it first started and it was it was initially when we started working with them we're supposed to be beginner bundles you know, you can get, you know, this extra, 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 extra small ship. You get some resources, you get some Atlas and, and that's that. Uh, I didn't, um, I wasn't aware of the, the medium bundle actually. So, um, yeah, I'm, maybe, maybe someone on the team is working with them on getting this, or this could be right. just them doing it themselves at this point. Uh, but I know a lot of people actually buy these bundles. So it could, you know, from like a, a business perspective, Neo swap is probably maybe just focusing in a little bit more on these bundles since right. that's probably mm -hmm. what's doing the most volume on their website is what I'd guess. Sure. What, what does, uh, what is the transition to crew look like with regards to people that have, you know, right now that you have the, the association between ship and crew, which is why so many extra small ships, not, there's certainly a not out of necessity because you know, what's one person gonna do with that many extra smalls. It's for the purposes of having crew. Being that that's been the bottleneck, um, what's that transition look like? Is there? I'm, I'm sure it's been shared somewhere, but is there like a snapshot taken at some point, and then there's a separation between ship and crew? What does that look like? So the last thing we've talked about, and to put it, it could change. Just let me let me just say it could change. Everything could change here. But the last thing that I've heard is that there's going to be a. Um, a kind of a redemption process mm -hmm. where you put your ships in and then you get the ship out with that no longer comes with crew you're getting you're putting a ship in that has crew and components and then you put it into this the system and then what you get out of it is a ship crew and components but it's separate and so that's what it's going to look like so there but i've also you know there's been talks of is that is that actually what we're going to be doing and stuff like that so don't take that to the bank but right now i think that's the leading uh leading method that we're going to go with which is you just put yeah. your ships through something you get an sft out of it um that doesn't have crew involved yeah that makes sense yeah i think we're gonna see uh, an incredible surplus of extra extra small ships at that point <laughs> <laughs> it'll be interesting to see for sure mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited for crew can't wait but also, that's probably probably not a bad thing either, because if if mm -hmm. those those smaller ships go down, it just means better price yeah. point for beginners who are just coming in. So, yeah, right. opportunity for people coming in, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, well, I guess that was, if not the last line item for the show, 
we just uh, hit the one hour and 44 minute mark. Uh, yeah, if there's nothing else to talk about, you know, other comments and concerns or complaints or, uh, you know, whatever it is, looking at the comments now. We have could be a time uh, time perfectly for racers to thrive. That could be that could be interesting. You get some some circuit race it going racing going. Yeah, true, true. I mean, it's certainly a great uh, uh, entry point, you know, for legacy gamers to come in between the uh, between surge esque uh, type uh, experience and then of course the the racetracks. Yeah, I think that's a. It's a cool introduction to what's going on in Star Atlas. While those of us that are the spreadsheet warriors iron out the e you know the the economic side of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we got Club Gris uh, about gamer tags. So I, yeah, I remember that being a, a uh, brought up a lot back in the day of like you're gonna have to claim your name because you can there could only be one. Uh, if those were gonna be auctioned off, I guess Dom, if you have any information on this, could you? Uh, share is that still a thing or well, are we gonna sure we actually went away from that a yeah year ago. yeah it's been yeah, a while it's been a i remember while, that yeah. too i that's actually something i was pretty excited about having like mm -hmm. a unique star atlas name but no i think we actually went away from that cool that would be a tough i mean how many like especially now that you have a really seasoned community and people are kind of attached to their name and you got other people going and scooping up their names <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh. Yeah, man. So yeah, outside of that, yeah, Web3 Gaming is trucking along some good, some good games across different chains. Uh, let us know what games you're playing or what you're interested in. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying Heroes of Mavia as a mobile phone game, you know, in the Ronin ecosystem. Wild Forest is an awesome game with play to airdrop going on right now. You know, although Mavia is on based, Coinbase's chain, you know, Nine Heroes on Solana is amazing. They were on the Jupiter's LFG's launch pad, but although they weren't uh, the winner. Uh, it's still one of the best types of games that you can find next to Star Atlas on Solana, in my opinion. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you've got, Alan, you've got, uh, I mean, even though there's like some rivalry going here between the projects, but Luvium is about to kick off its open beta. And regardless of what you think of them, they're, they're right. a player in the space. And, you know, they have some interesting tokenomics that I think what they're doing uh, is even though it's a very different project and a very different game, there's some there's some interesting stuff being built over there. So yeah. good on them. I hope their open beta goes well. Um, you know, yeah. So I mean, them yeah, succeeding man. means Web three succeeds. So exactly. Yeah, uh, succeeds. You know, uh, and it's not nothing against Alluvium. I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, if some, <laughs> people were saying that about Gala, well, like, whatever, come on, whatever if you're Gala, gonna say, I probably agree with. If, if Gala <laughs> succeeds, like this whole like, oh, we're all in it together. Mike, like, yeah, you know how many projects failed, and people were saying, oh, if if this project fails, we all fail, or if this one succeeds, we all succeed. <laughs> and maybe because look at Axie. Axie was the biggest at the time, and it technically failed as far as the functional economy because of just the influx of growth. But since then, they rebounded. SLP is deflationary. They, the uh, the Ronin chain has been built out, and they're by far they're the number two most used chain and this is only a gaming chain for now this is gonna they're gonna onboard DeFi and lending and all these different types of things they have a launch pad and, and it's like their comp binance is competing who has a, a lot more you know activity in different areas of crypto and where ronin is right alongside them and it's just uh and i've been you know preaching to the choir about ronin not so much a fanboy or maxi at, at all for any chain it's more of like hey they're, they're really building over there and they have a bunch of great IP games that have migrated over from Polygon. They got Pixels, the most daily active use game that's uh, that's just trucking along with their token launch, play to airdrop. They got Wild Forest for mobile. They got all the Axie games that you could play with the assets. They have Kydro, which was a, another game they just brought on. Even Ragnarok, who had like 50 million daily active users. But yeah, I digress. And all the user and the metrics could, could be argued uh, if they're accurate or not. But yeah, I, I just... I, I would always say just don't get complacent in the space. Don't, don't just stick to one chain or one project. That's the, the real message I'm trying to send here, which isn't financial advice at all. But uh, it's Atlas. Right. Uh, or, yeah, right. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Because, because whatever tickles your pickle, you might just have a problem like many people had in the past, left Star Atlas and then closed up shop and never learned anything else in crypto. But, you know, Gala Games, a lot of people came in thinking they're the messiah of, you know, revolutionizing gaming. And that was their first project. So now they tested the waters. They got burned. 
you know, they touch the oven or got too close to the sun, whatever you want to call it. And now they either leave the space completely or they jump into Star Atlas, which a lot of people are because of the guilds that were associated there are now, you know, you know, with Rome, like shout out to Virtual with his mom guild. Um, you know, he's he's putting in heavy, you know, lifting and doing a lot of heavy lifting over there uh, for a long time, putting a lot of uh, effort into building um uh, tokenomics structure. There was a recent meeting with the developer and the team at uh, Gala Games Mirandus. So, but all in all, it's a, yeah, just learn more about what's happening in the space, different chains. Uh, I'm not the expert, but I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm in it, you know, day in, day out for that as much as I can be. And I just, uh, suggest many others do the same if you're going to be here. So, uh, yeah, on that note, any other closing comments until, uh, until next week? I guess I'll just say thank you guys for for having me on the show again, fourth time, third time, whatever it is. I'm, just, I'm always happy to be here. Always happy to be chatting with you guys. Um, and uh, thanks for thanks to everyone for for joining the Metaverse Nomads and and also a shout out to you guys. I know like I've said it before, but your guys' consistency on Sundays and always doing this every single week seriously commendable. Like I, I love you guys for it, and so glad you guys are here, part of the community. So um, thanks for. Thanks for also joining Surge yesterday. Thanks to everyone in the audience for joining Surge yesterday. And we're just going to keep moving forward here. That's it for me. Thank you guys again. Awesome, man. Always a pleasure to have you. That's all we can do step by step moving forward. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for everyone coming out. Like, subscribe, all that social media jazz. Um, Jess, do we have a guild? We've got a guild, man. Guild is called Rome. May have heard of it, may not. If you find yourself unaffiliated, come check us out at uh, romeguild.com or gorome.io. I don't know why he's put in the Discord. <laughs> it's like we, forward slash XYZ hyphen W7. <laughs> 69420. You'll find it. You'll find your way there. You can find our, our uh, Copa video. It tells yeah. you a bit about us, who we are, what we do. You can learn a little bit about the Rome lore within the Star Atlas world of Gallia. You can learn a bit about our structure and all that good stuff. But we have a good time. We have a very active Discord. Come on over and check us out. Yay. So go yeah. Rome or stay Only home. for your kids, too. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> That was it, man. Hey, Dom gave us our outro already, man. I felt like, man, we just need to click the button. Like, boom. Yeah, let's Atlas do it again. Let's do it again. Dom, Dom take us out. <laughs> Say whatever you want. Atlas Minor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, ah, my ears. <laughs> oh, damn, what the hell? That was good. I'm going to remix that. <laughs> Get a new mic. <laughs> All right, we love it. We love it. All right. Cue the song. All righty, y'all. Let's all sing uh, together. Fancy hat. You have any final words, man? You're kind of quiet over there. You got anything? You yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, it's been a good week, and yeah, looking forward to everything to come. And definitely the next surge. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, actually killing people. Yeah. We Sweet. keep moving. <laughs> Peace out. Later. Atlas Minor, you were born to push the block in search of all. Now it's time that you are gone, so farewell, Atlas Miner. And farewell, Mud and Pony, too. Who's the sector? Same to you. The pirate bastards ran him through, so farewell, Atlas Miner. They promised you a diamond mine. I'll be damned, it's hard to find I hope there's justice for their crimes and Farewell, Atlas Miner and Farewell, friend, don't take it hard Getting killed ain't all that bad They'll treat you well in the repair yard so Farewell, Atlas Miner